Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Observation. Right now, we are going to have to observe where some of these system link points around the space station are. Good. Looks like that's working. Add another. Including some of these important hatch controls so that we can actually let her move freely around the station. Okay. Now add the EAS-11 airlock hatch controls. Okay, where is 11? I think that's... There we go. It's the opposite one. That's 8. Is it 1 over? Yeah, there it is. Oops, gotta zoom in. your system link interface to open the EAS-11 airlock. That's it. It's open. I'm out. Good work, Sam. Okay. Let's get this up and running. Josh? I don't know if you can hear me, but... Oh, I hate these things. It's a shame because the reflection in her helmet actually rocks. It looks really good. Josh, if you're in EAS Module 12, then stay put. The hull connection isn't secure, and most of our systems are underpowered. I'll work something out. Josh? Houston? Anyone? Wait a minute, Sam. Our internal communication network is fully online. Where has everyone gone? Oh shit. Uh, okay, station alert, station alerts. Right, Sam, you should have access to your OS now. Yeah, finally, even more of the station is opened up to us. You its camera feeds in the EAS arm at least. Try it now. Find that fire, Sam. She makes a good point about where everyone else has gone because this is not a small station. This is a huge space station, an international one with uh, several different wings for different countries and coalitions, like the EAS. Uh, is the European and American wing, but we also got hint of a Russian arm to the space station and a Chinese one. But so far, there it's been desolate. Out of control in EAS-4. Shit, I'm on my way! So Emma, we can see, is in 09, and we can actually track where she's headed with the camera feed, which I think is exceptionally neat. And watch her move around the station in real time on her way down to the fire in EAS-04. See a little bit of clipping. That's okay, though. We're not supposed to see that. It's fine, to be honest. Even though it doesn't always look like a budget indie game, it is a budget indie game. Uh, for the most part, though, it it's gorgeous. Okay, so we've swung around to six. Sam, I just love the internal layout of the this. The hatch in EAS six is locked down. Can you get it open for me? Yep, we're already working on that. It's open. I'm on my way. We could have done that uh, from the other side, by the way. Relocate I think I did it. EAS3. I'll need your help when I get there. From the opposite panel last time. Is 
So I think she's now stationed just outside of EAS-04. She's now on the opposite side of the door. So we just have to find that door and prep it. That should be it, because that leads from 4 back into EAS-03. are here-ish. There we go. Feels like the whole ship is coming apart, huh? Just one thing after the other. One crisis to manage <laughs> That's it. it's working. after the, the other. Dissipating now. How bad is it? The rack units have been damaged beyond any functional use. Overall, that's not too bad, considering. What started it? What was the source, Sam? We need to stop it happening again. Oh, we've been on Remedy the source. On panel LFE1 indicates a potential source. What? That's just a blank plate. Let me see. Something is coming out of the side. What is that? It's like a thick grease. Or oil. Dark red. And there is maybe something in storage above that's leaking. Oh, come on! What now? Sam, give me a status report. Severe stress warning. Like I said, one crisis after another. There is significant stress being applied to EAS-12. Immediate separation recommended. Please, if there is anyone in Module 12, make yourself known now. We are about to jettison the module. Someone, please respond. This is getting much worse. <sighs> okay. Sam, get ready for the separation procedure. Okay, first, process my authorization code and give me a security override key. Oh shit, yeah. This is awkward. Four, four, two, four, one, three, three, two, four. Four, one? Ah, oh, fuck. I Sam, got lost. Authorization. Oh. One, four, four, one, four, four. two, four, one, three, three, two, four. Three, three, two, four. It's awkward with the WASD again. Two. Being nine, zero, assigned to three, different numbers. Four, one, nine. Got it. Instead it's of just now. inputting the numbers Hurry, themselves. Sir. Target the jets and push the module away safely. And now this is essentially a series of quick time events. Where you're WASDing around these locks. Including the weird diagonals. I hope to God if anyone's in there. I hope they're suited up. Oh, it's just odd. We've stopped spinning. Stabilized. I think. I think we're okay. Listen, I'm going to relocate you to the external cameras and see if we can get a better view of the station. Or what's left of it. The 
signals are weak, distorted. I don't understand. We should be right above Houston. Can you detect any damage, Sam? So, we have the damaged solar array. And we've gone through the internal structure of the station. But now we actually get a pretty decent view of the exterior, too. The primary solar panel array on the EAS arm has been torn off. That explains the lack of power. Complete cascading failures. All while in the cold, isolated vastness of space. And apparently alone, despite a station that should have been teeming with others. Things can, can often feel unbearable and overwhelming when we hit our breaking point, when we have all the support structures the in the world. 12 is still tethered with unusual structural damage. It's like a hole has been cut out of it. What would do that? Imagine the stress of this kind of situation. Also, that's one question she asked. Another is, what in the middle of space could do that? That's the money question for me. We must have spun off course. Damage doesn't look too severe. Just isolated sections. So, since she dismissed that, we might actually be able to just pack it in on feed number two. Didn't see anything after a quick sweep. But there is, in all likelihood, always another crisis. Are you 07? Instead of EAS uh, the this time. The arm upper modules are badly damaged. The damage seems to be localized to the upper part of the arms. I'm going to connect to the distance cam. We should see where we are above Earth and if we've lost any altitude. Yeah, let's see how far off course we've gotten. Horse set Saturn. Holy shit. I brought you here. It seems. What? Why? Is our will or Sam's will our own? Holy shit! So it wanted us to bring her, and we brought her to Saturn. And Saturn seems like it's uh, extremely haunted. And now it begins. The real horror of this game begins.
So that is a hell of a title drop. And a cliffhanger to begin that drop on. Just a beautifully produced sequence. I restarted your core systems. Sense. And to be quite honest, I'm fucking terrified right now. And anyway, without you, I'm not going anywhere, so. Welcome back. <laughs> okay, first off. Let's try this again. Sam, voice authenticate. Dr. Emma Fisher, 140412. So just like before. Okay. Okay. So, Sam, here's the deal. I'm stuck in the EAS arm for now. I think it's related to power, but a lot of the hatches are fully locked down, so I'm going to try something different here. Okay, that's audio at least. Almost there, just a sec. There we go. Okay, Sam. I have rigged a connection sphere for you to use. You should be able to take control of this and fly around the station. It'll let you reach parts of the station your cameras can't see, and it'll let you wirelessly connect to non-station devices, like laptops. Looking good, Sam. Okay. Let's see if you can move it. Fly over to me. Ah, yeah. Now we have even more freedom, more control. Once we get used to inhabiting the sphere, the orb that we have become. So we'll get used to navigating full 3D space next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one.